Cerebral ALD affects boys in the prime of their school years. People who have this genetic mutation, about 40% of them will go on to have a disorder where they can seem completely normal and then within short order will gain symptoms like seizures, losing their vision, losing their ability to hear, to communicate. And if that is not treated, those boys are expected to be neurologically devastated within two years and ultimately expected to die of their disease. When the opportunity came for our program to develop a gene therapy program around this disease, this became the most important thing that I do in my medical career. Hi, Boria. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good. You have new data? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I became involved in the disease because I'm a hematologist, and I was quite fascinated by the fact that one could basically treat the disease with blood stem cells and so began working on this treatment 12 or 13 years ago. We were involved from the very beginning and saw all the way through to FDA approval. And that doesn't happen very often in a single group of investigators, so it's quite unique. Most of the advantages of gene therapy stem from the fact that you're using the patient's own cells rather than having to find cells from someone else. Cerebral ALD has been treated with allogeneic stem cell transplant for decades. Allogeneic stem cell transplant works very well when you can find an appropriate donor. The best donor is someone who happens to be a sibling, happens to be a related donor. When you can't find an appropriately matched donor within the family, we turn to unrelated donor registries. For some people, that is an incredibly successful endeavor, but their risk of complications of stem cell transplant is significantly greater than the others. So the way the gene therapy in this disease works is that we harvest the blood stem cells from the patient and take them to a very special lab. And in that lab, the virus vector, which is carrying the corrected gene, is applied to the cells. And as a natural process, it infects the stem cell and inserts the DNA that we want to transfer into the DNA of the cell. Then the child is admitted to the hospital and given their own stem cells back in a stem cell transplant. And ultimately, those cells, because they're now corrected of the defect, they can stop the progression of the disease by breaking down the toxic substances that are causing the disease due to the mutation of the gene. So that means that patients who don't have a sibling donor, which is the majority of patients, have an alternative therapy that works. At Boston Children's Hospital, we are incredibly proud of the work that we have done with children and families with ALD. And, and the thing I think about is when the stem cells are about to be infused and everyone is there and everyone is ready and excited. It's usually a parent or the child themselves who wants to push the start button because this means hope. This means a normal life, hopefully, for this child. We want their future to be limitless and that is possible with gene therapy. Ready, James? All right, you going. Good job, James.